Hey, it's James Fathers Rights and Resources, hashtag How I Got Custody. I'm going to show you a quickie little lesson on looking up case law. Everybody should know how to do this. It's not 100% essential for your case like the law is, but the case law elaborates on the law, helps you find out more details about the law, and it's a higher authority than the court you're going in front of. You could, If you find a Supreme Court case, a U.S. Supreme Court case, your state Supreme Court, your state Court of Appeals case, that tells the court what they're inter what this is the interpretation of the best interest of the child alimony or award of this or that or whatever. You can shove it in a judge's face. So let me let me show you. And this is the benefit of getting a consult with me. This guy got a consult with me. We looked for this case law and I got a hit right away. So take a look at So there's a guy who wants to vacate or undo or set aside an order. <clears throat> that means he wants to do a motion to set aside or basically wipe out an order like it never existed because it was a bad order. So he's in Georgia, so I Googled motion to set aside, vacate. There's two different, it could, you could call it a motion to vacate or motion to set aside. So we were looking for the law in there. And here's the law, Georgia Code 91160, relief from judgment. And here's the rule on motion to vacate it. You know, if somebody committed fraud, you can go back and vacate an order. If you have a complaint in equity, meaning there's some something, something unequal or unfair or something like that, if if the clerk made a mistake, you can go back and vacate that. Now, in order to find out more detail, like in Washington State, I know that people can vacate an agreed order if they signed it under duress. Okay, so if you he feels like he signed an order under pressure stress or bullying or duress so it doesn't say anything about duress anywhere in her in here but um i think later it says for the law of cases abolished you know in washington and other states they adopt the federal rule on motions to vacate or set aside and the last factor you know you got a bunch of factors here one two three uh or is it's lettered here it goes down to h in Washington, the last factor is any other reason. And case law says that that means it has to be an extraordinary other reason. So here's what we did. To go look for case law, what we did was we Googled. First of all, I checked the Georgia Supreme Court set aside duress. I'm looking for duress as a reason. Look at this. Bam. Rolls versus rolls or rouse versus rouse. I find this case. So... This case right here is a case, and it doesn't have the citation for a published case. So when you go to court, uh, when you go to the Court of Appeals, let me, so when you go up to the Court of Appeals or to the Supreme Court, if you have a significant case that th they establish, uh, overturn a case or say, hey, we got this all wrong, that case will be published in the reporters in the library. So you're down here in Superior Court or District Court. You go to the Court of Appeals. There's Appellate Court. Then there's Supreme Court. If you go to the law library, on one wall, there might be a whole shelf full of books reporting Court of Appeals cases. And then on the other wall or across there, across the aisle, there's a whole roll of books reporting Supreme Court cases. There's going to be less Supreme Court cases because there's more Court of Appeals. Usually a state has three, four, five Court of Appeals and only one Supreme Court. So we're looking for this case. And we're looking, we're looking for a case that's found in the law library. Not every case that goes to the Court of Appeals gets published in the books, only the significant ones. The ones that are significant have a specific citation. And this case that I found, it does not have a specific citation, which means it's not a published case. But within this case are other published cases. So let's take a look. So within this Rowles case, we go down and we look and see... Within this case, you'll see another case, okay? Now, this is a published case because it has a citation. I'm going to tell you the elements of a citation. This isn't really good. I'll, I'll tell you another one in a minute. Well, let, let, me let me show you an easier one to read. Uh, okay, so this is Hampton Island, LLC versus HAOP. Bam. Okay, so this is this full citation. I want to show you the elements. I've done a video on this before, but people don't look at all my videos. So 
When you cite a case, just like when you write a book report and you cite Time Magazine or the New York Times or this journal, you have to cite like the date, the magazine, the article, and the date, uh, the year, and the page, and the volume. When you cite case law, and you, if you guys look at the Troxel case that I have on my flow page, it has the same kind of formatting. So here's the name of the case. It's Hampton versus H-A-O-P. Just say that for short, okay? Then the next section, here's where it's found in the Georgia Law Library. This number is the book that it's found in, and this number is the page number that starts in. So there's a, if you see, it says Georgia App, which means Georgia Court of Appeals. If it's a Supreme Court, it just says Georgia, okay? A lot of states are like this. It's not all exactly the same. So... I'm going to go, remember I told you the different roles in the law library? There's a roll of books called Georgia App, and there's a roll of books called just Georgia for the Supreme Court. So if I want to go look at this case, look, they quoted, under Georgia law, yada, yada, consists of imprisonment, blah, blah, blah. Hampton Island. So this quote is found in this case. So if I want to go read that, I'm like, wow, that's interesting. Let me go read this case. First of all, I could just copy and paste this and Google it, and I'll be able to read it. But if I want to go to the law library and find it, I will go to the Georgia app section of the law library in Georgia, and I will go look for book number 306, and I'll open it up to page 542, and there's this case. Now, they add an extra number right here, 544. The reason why they add that is because they're saying 544. If you open to 542, you will find a couple pages later on 544 this exact quote. They're telling you exactly where they have that quote. Now, not only... They won't always do this. Sometimes they'll just leave it looking like this, okay? But they're adding this to save you time. This is exactly where that quote is. Now, the next section is where this is found in the Southeast Regional Library. So Georgia has a law, law library in the entire Southeast region. Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, Mississippi, Alabama. I don't know what I'll say. Somewhere down there, maybe let's say it's in, let's say it's in Atlanta, Georgia. Let's say it's in another state, Nashville, Tennessee. There's a regional library that has books that report uh, cases from the entire Southeast region. Why do they do this? I do not know. They just do it. So you have the name of the case, where it's found in Georgia's law library, and where it's found in the, South, in the Southeast regional library, wherever that is. And this says SE Second because they had a whole series of books that went up to $9.99, and then they started over at $100 again with the second series. And then if they if the, if they have nine, over 999 books on the second series, there, there's a row on the, on one shelf that goes down for a thousand books, or probably 900 books. And then when they start all over and they run out of run out of books, for some reason they don't want to use a thousand. They want to start over to 100, so they call it the second series. And there might be a third series. I know Washington has or the regional library up here has a third series, but the Pacific Reporter. So anyway, the regional library and book you go down SE second. In the law library, you go to book number 702, open it up to 770, and here's this case, the, uh, the Hampton Island case. And then there's the year. So there's four parts to case law. Hampton, uh, the name of the case. And then later on, if they re-quote Hampton, like down there, they immediately quote Hampton again, and they put ID. I don't know what that means. Uh, that, that's abbreviated for All I know is it, it's, uh, it's a reference to the same thing above, so they don't have to re-quote the whole thing. They made another quote there, and they say ID at page 544, okay? And th that's enough to do that. They did a bunch of extra here. So, or if you, if, you, if you cite a case, and then you cite this Hampton case later, you can put Hampton at whatever later on. You don't put ID, because ID says imme means immediately above, or the last posted quote. Okay, so that's the case law. And then, later on, this thing starts talking about a judgment will be set aside for duress. That's exactly what this guy needed. And he got it in a consultation with me. And his dumbass attorney that he, ha that he had never, ever told him about this. And some of you guys think I'm a con artist because I charge for my time. But you spent ten, twenty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 on an attorney like a total dumbass. And didn't even look for extra help outside of the other failure that you're working with. So... Before a judgment will be set aside, it must appear the complainant had a good defense and blah, 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 blah. So you have to have qualify certain things. And there's a bunch of other stuff later on. And he can go and read this case. Or he can copy and paste this, this quote right here and start his brief. And then there's another case in here and it goes on and on. That's a shorty version of how to look up case law and find other case law with.